Going off of the previous example involving exponentials and whatnot, let's look at example 14. Both of the limits below approach infinity. However, which one grows at a faster rate? And so we've seen both of these limits before, limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed and limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x. We know both of those things are unbounded. They do not exist due to unbounded behavior. They're approaching positive infinity. But the question is, if I think of this as a race, which one would be winning that race? Which one would be getting to infinity faster as, as if you could actually get there? Well, one way to think about this is just to look at the graphs. So we have graphed here, y equals x cubed in pink, and then we have e to the x in blue. And initially the pink one is winning, but it doesn't take long for e to the x, the blue graph, to overtake it and then simply outpace x to the third. Right? We might expect that. Exponentials grow really, really fast. Exponentials are going to grow faster than any kind of power function. And this refers to something called relative growth rates. Whenever I'm dealing with limits at infinity, I can think of, to help me evaluate those limits, I can think of a relative gro growth rate and just decide what part of this function is growing faster. And that's the part that's going to take over the whole entire limit. Let's see how that might play out here in the next example. Find each of these limits. We got the limit as x approaches infinity of, and it is the rational function, 2x squared minus 4x over x plus 1. And we're doing the same thing on number 2, just to negative infinity. Well, let's, let's not even do calculus here. Let's, let's take a look at, since this is a rational function, we have a higher exponent up top than we have on the bottom, which means that this has a faster growth rate than the bottom. This should be approaching a positive infinity, right? So there we go. We got positive infinity on this one. And over here on number two, um, again, I, I would think that in terms of relative growth rate, this top is growing faster than the bottom. A square grows faster than a linear. And so this should overtake the, the, the bottom. However, we have a special case here where we have, we have two times infinity squared. That's a positive infinity. But then I have minus four times infinity. That's a negative four times a negative is also a positive infinity. So you got a positive up top, but then you have a negative on the bottom. This should be reaching a negative infinity. And of course, whenever we look at the graph, this is actually referring to the slant asymptotes that you have here. So let's look at this same question in another light, something that you probably wondered about whenever you were doing this for the first time in algebra or in pre-cal. That line there, of course, means divide. And I can divide this by synthetic division. I just put a negative one on the outside of that box. And then on the inside, I need a 2 for the x squared, a negative 4, and the constant term is a 0. Bring down the 2, multiply by negative 1, I get a negative 2. Add them, a negative 6. Multiply, I get a positive 6. And then gives me 6 left over as the remainder. In other words, this function here, its equivalent form is the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x minus 6 plus a 6 over the divisor, which was x plus 1. So think of this in two different parts here. We have this linear equation, and then we're adding in this 6 over x plus 1. The part that's left, this, this part that's right up front, this 2x minus 6, that's your slant asymptote, right? That's how you were... Uh, able to, a couple of years ago, to get the equation of the slant asymptote, which we see graphed. That's right over here. But did you ever ask yourself, like, well, what, what am I supposed to do with the remainder that's over here, the 6 over x plus 1? And, of course, your teacher's just like, oh, you, that, that part you, you ignore, or that part goes to 0. Well, we can understand that now in the context of limits, because if I just take the limit of that remainder part, the limit as x approaches infinity of 6 over x plus 1 and plug in an infinity, we essentially have 6 over infinity, which we know goes to 0. So in this limit question, this portion is going to 0, and that's why we always ignored it in terms of finding the equation of the slant asymptote. All right, I think we we're almost done here. We just have one more example. 
and we've got another limit at infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity, the square root of x squared plus 1 minus x. What do we do first? We do a direct substitution. So I have infinity squared plus 1. Infinity takes square root. We have an infinity minus infinity. All right, so if we have infinity and we subtract infinity from it, what do we have? Do we have 0? Well, remember that infinity is not a number. If it was 12 minus 12, sure, it'd be 0. But in this case, we have another indeterminate form, like infinity divided by infinity or 0 over 0. So now our question is, how do I resolve this one? Notice that we have square roots in it. So uh, even though this one doesn't have a denominator, we can put it over 1 and then try to rationalize the numerator. So here's our last example. And uh, let's, let's attempt to resolve this limit and see what happens. Does it go to 0 or does it go someplace else? Now, uh, in, that, in the start of this video, we talked about relative growth rates. And we have two infinities here. So the reason why this is not always 0 is because this one over here could be going faster or approaching infinity at a faster rate, and it can overtake this one. So sometimes this could go to, say, infinity, or sometimes it could go to zero if they're both about the same, and then other times there's some sort of compromise in between, and it could go to something like a half. Let's see what happens with this one. So I'm going to quote-unquote rationalize the numerator. The limit as x goes to infinity, square root of x squared plus 1 minus x over, well, 1. And then we'll multiply it by our fancy 1. And our fancy 1 is the conjugate of the top. So square root of x squared plus 1 plus x, both on the top and the bottom. Okay, and then multiply fractions as we do. Top times top and bottom times bottom. The top functions like a difference of two squares, so I would multiply these two together, and these square roots would cancel, and I would just have x squared plus 1. The middle terms cancel out, and then I do minus x times x, so minus x squared. And the bottom we always leave factored, but we're multiplying by 1, so it doesn't really matter. So we have the square root of x squared plus 1 plus an x. Across the top, we can see that our x squareds cancel very conveniently, leaving us with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. Now, since we're done with all the simplification, we want to try the direct substitution again. Plugging in an infinity doesn't do anything up top, but on the bottom, we're going to have infinity squared plus one more, still infinity, takes square root. We have infinity there, and then plus another infinity. That's still infinity. And remember, we got a number over infinity. This should be approaching zero. So here was one of those cases where that infinity minus infinity is equal to zero, or at least it's approaching zero, but that's that isn't an expectation that it should always have, that it's always going to get to zero, because it's entirely possible that one of these infinities is growing at a faster rate and might overtake the other one, or they might compromise someplace in the middle. When we get to our lesson on L'Hopital's rule, we will revisit this idea, and specifically we'll revisit the idea of a relative growth rate. Now, one last thing before we conclude here, we have a new indeterminate form of infinity minus infinity. But just bear in mind that an infinity plus infinity would not be in indeterminate. It's just more infinity, right? Something a little bit bigger than infinity, like this lesson. All right, and then that brings us to the conclusion of this lesson, where we were able to determine both finite and infinite limits at infinity. When we have a finite limit at infinity, that's where objective 2 comes into play which was about finding horizontal asymptotes of the graph of a function.